Sh Sh shalom, shalom, welcome. Welcome to week number seven uh, of the Hebrew alphabet, God's spiritual pathway. We Today we're going to be looking at the letter Vav, the letter Vav. And the letter Vav is the sixth letter in the Hebrew alphabet. And if you were to look at it in the book, this is the way that the Vav would appear in the Hebrew scroll uh, or the book form if you were looking at a book. And I've written the letter Vav up here on the board, uh, right here. It's basically just uh, almost just a straight line. It's just a straight line. And, and Vav is the number six. It is the numer numerical six uh, or the number six. So if you were going to write the number six in Hebrew, you would write the letter Vav. And that would stand for the number six. If you're going to uh, have a list of things and you're going to number them one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, the sixth one would be the letter Vav. So it, the picture of the letter Vav is the tent peg. It's a tent peg. Uh, in the Bible, you might see it called a nail, a nail. And a nail or a tent peg is the letter Vav. And so the, um, it's also a hook. Uh, it's also the word for hook. Uh, hook is uh, also a word that is vav. And vav, uh, when it's connected to, as a prefix to a word, it is the, it is the um, uh, conjunction and. It, uh, it connects words together. So uh, vav at the beginning of most the, the words most of the time, majority of the time, it's going to be the word and. So they, they're going to take a, uh, a three or two or three letter root and they add a prefix bob to it and that means and. So if I was going to say, um, if I was going to say uh, Esau and Jacob, I would say Esav, which is Hebrew for Esau, Esav, ve Yaakov. Ve is the vav, Yaakov is Jacob. Esav ve Yaakov. Esau and Jacob, Esau ve Yaakov. All right, so the, the ve, if you hear, the, hear a ve in Hebrew, then you're probably uh, looking at the letter, uh, the word and. There are three wells, ways to spell uh, the letter out, if you wanted to spell it. The first way is two vavs together, so that would be vav, vav. And... If you look at that, that uh, it's number six, so you got six and six is 12, and the Jewish people see that as the 12 tribes of Israel. So Bob represents the 12 tribes of Israel and also represent the 12 apostles of the Lamb then, that way. But look at this way. You have Bob, Yud, Bob is another way of spelling it. Bob is Bob, Yud, Bob. And when you total that up, Yud is 10, and the two Bobs are six each, and that means 22. There are 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet, so they they equate Bob with the Hebrew alphabet. All 22 letters of Hebrew alphabet. Now I'm going to make a point about that in just a few moments. But uh, then we have also the word uh, that Bob spelled this way: Bob Aleph Bob, and that has a numerical value of 15. Six plus one plus six is 13, and that equates to Ichad. Also is, uh, equates to the word. Uh, uh, um, for uh, love, which is um, Ahav. And uh, so uh, uh, the word, the number 13 there, Ahava and Echad, Ahava and Echad, both equal 13. So Vav is what we call the upright man, the upright man, because Vav is the number six, which is the number of man, because man was created on the sixth day. The sixth day God created man. And so man becomes uh, connected with the number six. Um, the, so it's the upright man. So the first, uh, the first Adam, the first uh, man, was created upright. Now we know that he sinned, so he, he lost his upright stance. And we're going to talk about the second Adam, who is the upright man, the last Adam, who, is coming, who has come, and that's Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, uh, he is he has come to be the upright man for us, and he has uh, restored back to us the things that we've lost. But 
uh, when God, Adam was created, he was created as the upright man. So Vav is the upright man, upright man. When Yeshua came, he came in a, in a, in a body of a man, and he became the last Adam. He became the upright man again. When we read the uh, Hebrew in Genesis 1.1, 1, 1, the Vav is the Vav appears the first time in this in this verse, and it appears as the twenty second letter in that verse. So if you were to uh, look at the Hebrew in uh, in Genesis one one, better sheet bara Elohim et Hashemayim veet haharetz, and that veet in the uh, in the sixth it's actually the sixth word in that seven letter uh, Hebrew phrase. So you in the sixth word, it's the 22nd letter in the sixth word. And it's the letter Vav, which is the number six. So we have the upright man in the sixth letter position that is connected to the word et, which is Aleph Tav, which is a non-translatable non, uh, word in Hebrew. It's the only word in Hebrew that's not translated in the entire Bible. Uh, it has no translation to it. Yeshua uh, said to John on the Isle of Patmos, he said, I am the Alpha and the Omega. We read that in, in the King James or in mo most translations they translate as Alpha and Omega. But in actuality, he would have been saying uh, in Hebrew to John, because they were both Hebrew speakers, he would have been saying, I am the Aleph and the Tav. I am the Aleph Tav that is connected to the Vav in the sixth letter of the, of the first sentence in the Hebrew Bible. And so, the, so not only is he the Vav that's connected to the Aleph Tav, he's the upright man, but he is also the Aleph Tav. So right here, with that Vav Aleph Tav connection, we see, we see, the, we see the heavenly part of, uh, the, the, uh, of God, God the Son the, through the Aleph Tav, but we also see God as man through the through the Vav, and that's um, it's interesting because that's the first appearance of this upright Vav in the Hebrew Bible. So the first appearance of Yeshua is as the twenty second letter that's connected to the Aleph Tav. So. We, the, the, you have a God-man connected right there in that. But it's also the 22nd letter, and the 22nd letter speaks to us of the 22 letters of the Aleph Bet, which all Hebrew words are created out of the 22 letters of the Hebrew Aleph Bet. In John 1, verse 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God. Well, words are created out of letters, and there it is, the in the beginning was the Vav. It was the tw was the entire Aleph Bet right there in the twenty second position, twenty second letter of the uh, verse in Genesis one one. Phenomenal, phenomenal thing right there in Genesis one one, speaking to us about Yeshua Hamashiach, Jesus Christ. All right, so we have the twenty second letter. The first Adam was born on Yom Vav, which was day six. Yom Vav is how we would say day six, Yom Vav. And the, the Vav is that which connects. It's a tent peg. It's one that, that, that uh, puts a nail in. Uh, isn't it interesting that the upright man is connected to the nail which is on the cross? Amazing. There, uh, uh, there on the cross, there were, there were nails driven into his hand. Uh, by the way, there were three nails. You have a nail for the, the left hand. You have a nail for the right hand. The feet were actually put together, and the nail was driven through the through the feet through the uh, feet of the of Yeshua. And so you have three nails: God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. All three are the upright man, and they are are there in the body of Yeshua, right there. All three nails in the body of Yeshua, signifying that Yeshua is is one with the Father. He's one with himself, and he's one with the, with the Holy Spirit. He is one, all three in one. Very interesting. Uh, court. I mean, you may have not ever seen that before with the three nails, but, uh, but because there are three valves that were driven into his body. All right. But it, uh, the valve connects and involves with others. 
And that's what man does. He connects and involves himself with others. What do we, uh, you know, we, we, no man is an island. We all, we all love to have other, uh, our friends and our relatives. We, we love connections with people. We like to connect. But he, the upright man wants to connect and be involved with us. And who is that upright man? Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. He wants to connect and be involved with us. Why? Because he is an upright man. He, he, is, he is the Vav. He wants to connect. He wants to, he wants to be part of our lives. And I hope you may have made that connection with him. Vav also connects the upper and the lower. In Genesis 1-1 that we just talked about, uh, it, it, it appears between two other words, Hashemayim and, and uh, 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 Haharetz. Hashemayim is the heavens, and Haharetz is the earth. And the Vav is right there in the middle of that, connecting heaven and earth. Who is it that connects heaven and earth? Yeshua. He is the one that has connected heaven and earth. How did he do that? He did that when he was hanging upon the cross, nailed with the vase in his, in his hands and his feet. He was connecting him. He made the connection between. He is the mediator between heaven and earth. He is, he is the mediator between God and man. And so the, um, um, he is the ladder uh, that, that, that is connecting heaven and earth. He told Nathaniel, he said, he said uh, Nathaniel, he said, uh, because I said you were under the big tree, big tree you, you believe me? He said, you're going to see greater things than that because you're going to see angels ascending and descending upon the uh, Son of Man. And by that, he was identifying himself as the ladder that Yaakov, uh, Jacob, had seen in, uh, uh, in Genesis when he was uh, there at Bethel running away from his brother uh, Esau. And... So uh, when he was running away from Esau, he, he was, uh, uh, he was uh, uh, stopped there at Bethel and he saw that ladder that was, uh, had angels descending and ascending upon the, upon the earth. And Yeshua is saying, I am Jacob's ladder. I am the Bob. I am that ladder that connects. And so uh, we have that right there. The sixth month in the Hebrew calendar, the, the, month, the sixth month of the Hebrew calendar is the month of Elul, Elul. And Elul is the time that the Jewish uh, people do uh, what's called uh, tshuva, tshuva. And uh, this word right here, tshuva. Today, today that word tshuva uh, in, the, in the modern day uh, Hebrew means answer. So if you had a question and, uh, and they were asking for an answer, they would say, tshuva, answer, answer, tshuva. Uh, in, the, in the Bible, it means return, to return. Uh, it comes from the root shuv, which means to turn. And so it's been translated as, uh, as repent, a repentance, that type of thing. Uh, but they are returning, they're returning back. And so this six months of Elul is about this time of tshuva, of returning back, of answering. Of answering what? Well, God's love is the question. And tshuva, repentance, is the answer. That's the answer. So when you experience God's love in your life, then it makes, it, it makes you want to respond with an answer to that. And that answer to God's love is tshuva. Have you ever felt the love of God so rich and so pure and so great upon you? What is your answer to that love? Your answer, the only answer that you, we have to the love of God because we cannot, our, our, the love that we have is, is the love of God that's been shed apart in our hearts. We, we, don't, we don't have uh, love that, 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 that is ours. Uh, God has given us that love. But what we can give, give back to him is our repentance, our tshuva, our returning back to him, a, a returning back to him, a turning away from, from the world and a turning back to him. And so the more that we turn toward him, and we all, I don't care how, how long you've been uh, living for the Lord, I don't care how, how, many, uh, how many degrees you have behind your name, you still need a time of returning. 
There, there should be a daily turning to the Lord. There's, there's a time, there's always a time, when there's always something that we can deal with that, that we can get a little closer to, to, to Him, a little, a little more deeper into Him, a little, a little more uh, face-to-face with Him than we have before. There's always more to have with God. And so tshuva has a, is, is not just repentance. It's a turning. It's a, it's a, it's a coming closer to Him. And so uh, uh, that's, uh, we, that's our answer to His love, is coming closer to Him. The closer that we get to Him, the, the more that we are answering His love back to Him. We're bringing that love back to Him. All right. So let's look at the number six. <clears throat> the number six uh, in, as a number. You... Um, and, and how that that would revolve around it. Six is interesting because we have six days and then the Sabbath. So literally, if you think about it, the six days revolve around a center, which is the Sabbath. So the Sabbath becomes the center of the, of the week, the week. So everything, all six days then, are centered around this Sabbath rest. So when we have a Sabbath, a day of rest, then that prepares us then for the other days because the other days get strength and vitality from that center part of the of the Sabbath. The other thing about the number six is there are six directions. For instance, uh, we have up, we have down, we have right, we have left, we have forward, and we have backward. Six directions. And, and what is in the center of those six directions? Man. Man is in the center of those six directions. And who is man? Again, it's the Bob. And that Bob is the upright man. I'm not talking about the fallen man. I'm talking about the upright man, Yeshua. And if you're going to get directions, if you're going to get directions for, what, uh, for your upward movement, if you're going to get directions for your feet, your, down, your downward movement, if you're going to get directions to the right or to the left, or if you're going to get directions to go forward or even to retreat and go backwards, then that direction comes from the upright man who is in the center of those, four, of those six directions. Very interesting. All right. So then you have, there are six names. Uh, well, this is, this is interesting. There are six names for man in, in the Bible. In Genesis 2, verse 7, he's called Adam. Adam. So Adam, uh, Adam, as you might say it now, but uh, in Hebrew it's Adam. In Zechariah 6, verse 12, it's, it's Ish. Ish. Ish is the name for man. Then in Psalms 103, verse 15, Psalms 133, verse 15, Enosh. Enosh. Enosh is, is man. Jeremiah 17, verse 6, Gever, Gever is man, Gever. Matthew 4, 4, now we're going into the Greek over here. In Matthew 4, 4, Anthropos, Anthropos, where we get our word anthropology from. Anthropos is the word for man. Then in Matthew 7, 24, you have Aner, Aner, and Aner is man in, in Greek, Aner. So, you have Adam, Ish, Enosh, Gever, Anthropos, and Aner. Six names for man in the Bible. And that's the only six names that are in the Bible for man. So six and man are connected. All right, there are cycles for humanity. Uh, we have uh, the cycles. God, you know, see, God is a, is a cycle God. Everything goes around in a cycle. And once you understand that God, God, when is dealing with man, everything is in a cycle, and, and everything has has this six six cycle thing going on. Look at this: there were six days, and then the Sabbath. You have six years, and then you, the seventh year is the Shemitah. You have sixty nine years, or the end of the uh, end of a six, the sixth. 10 year period, the end of that six, ten, that, that six, 10 year period, and you have uh, the, uh, the um, uh, Yovel, or the Jubilee year. So the 69 years you have Yovel. At the end of the 6,000 year period, at the 6,999 years, at the end of that 6,000 year period, then you begin the next year with a millennium, a 1,000 year reign of Yeshua, Hamasiach. Jesus Christ upon this earth. And so uh, 
So there's a cycle for humanity all the way through. We are in a cycle, and we are, being, we, we are going around this cycle, and every cycle is greater than the cycle before. So you have the Sabbath, which is one cycle. Shemitah is even a greater Sabbath. Then you have the Yobel, which is even a greater Sabbath than that. And then you have the, the, the last one, the Millennial, which is even a greater Sabbath than that. And so each, each, each uh, cycle gets larger and larger as we go along. All right. The, uh, the, number, the, the Bob represents Torah and truth. Torah and truth. Now think about this. Yeshua is the living word. He is the living Torah. And so living, he's the living Torah. So it's, it's, it's obvious then that, that it would also represent the Torah. And so because the Yabav is a straight line and the Torah, it, it, the Torah puts a straight line for us to follow. He, Jesus, said, <laughs> Jesus said, narrow, uh, uh, wide, wide is the path, right? The destruction, right? But narrow is the, is the way to eternal life. There is a narrow path that we, if we walk, we can, we can, uh, we can uh, go, in, you know, um, uh, it, it, that's, so that's Torah. But, and, and that, that straight line also represents truth, because truth is a straight line. There's no, there's no, there's no broadness with truth. There's no, truth isn't just a broad concept. No, truth is truth. Truth is very narrow. Truth is, truth is what it is. It's black or white. And, so if it's not if it's not truth, then it's error. If it's not truth, it's falsehood. So it's a very narrow, straight line. Watch this. If I take every um, every number between one and six and add them together, one plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six, that equals twenty-one. Six and five is eleven. Four plus four is fifteen. Plus three is eighteen. Plus two is twenty. Plus one is twenty-one. If I multiply that, if I take 21 times 21, then 21 times 21 equals 441. The word for truth in Hebrew is the word emet, emet, aleph, mem, tav. Aleph is 1, numerical value of 1. Mem is numerical value of 40. Tav is numerical value of 400. When you add that together, it's 441. 441, which is a product of that of the first six uh, numbers added together and then multiplied by each other. All right. So let's look at some, uh, something that's very interesting about the letter Bob. When the Bob is placed in front of a, of a verb in Hebrew, when the Bob is placed in front of a verb in Hebrew, and this is only in the Bible, it doesn't work in modern Hebrew because they've, they've, they've They've dropped this out of, out of the use. But uh, in the Bible, if a bob is in front of the use, it has the ability. It's called what's called the conversive bob. It's, it's a con, it makes something converse of what it was. So it's called a conversive bob, and it changes the past to the future, and it changes the future to the past. So if something is past tense in Hebrew, then it changes to a future tense. Now, I know that there's not a pure future tense, in Hebrew, but in the sense of translation, we translate it into a future tense. All right, but so so I'm using I'm using uh, our 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 thing. But so it, it it's literally that, and they call this this is interesting the vav that reverses time, the vav that reverses time. Now I'm, I could get into this really deep with Einstein's theory of rel relativity and how that uh, how that time is related to uh, uh, velocity plus uh, plus gra or, or velocity and gravity because if you if you can get to the speed of light and, and get outside the realm of, realm of gravity then you can uh, that speed of light uh, you you literally slow down time and so uh, uh, that's the that's the theory of relativity with Einstein uh, and I'm not going to get deep into that because uh, uh, but I do want to it's the bob that reverses time so this, this valve that is related to truth, 
who is Yeshua HaMashiach, who said he is the way, the truth, and the life. Now, what have we talked about? I talked about him being the way, because he's, he, from, he's the center of all, of all six directions. I talked him about the being the truth, because he is the emet. He is the emet, because he is the living Torah. And he said, I also am the life, the Kaim. And life and light are synonymous with each other. And so he is the light of the world. He is the light of the world. And so when, when he is attached to you, when, when he is prefixed in your life, now he has to be prefixed. In other words, he has to be number one. He has to be the first thing in your life. But when he is in your life, he brings in the ability to reverse time. Well, what does that mean? That means that all of your past, he can reverse it all and make it as if it never happened. That's what he does. He can take all your future. And the things, he can bring the future into the present. He can bring things, bring things that haven't even occurred yet in your life. But if, they, if they're needed at your moment in time, he can bring them out of the future and bring them right into your present. Because he can reverse time. He has the ability to reach into your past. He has the ability to reach into your future. He has the ability to reach and bring, bring things that have not yet occurred for you. That you're not even ready for. And he can bring them into your future and bring it into today. He can take your past and he can change your past. And he can... Just for you in your life. Because he is, he is the valve when he's attached to your life and he is, the, he is the beginning of your life. He is at the very front of your life. When he is the front of your, your existence, then he can change time for you. Um, that's just, I would love just to do a whole hour just on that part right there. But uh, let's, let's go on. All right. The Torah scroll, this is, very, this is so interesting here. First of all, in Exodus 36, verse 36, it talks...